first question on this episode came from my guy BB. He said, do you think the Ravens have truly changed their philosophy by building the offense? In order for Ravens to succeed, they will need to operate on the old philosophy as well. Running the ball and playing good defense has been the common goal for years. Will Harbaugh really give Munkin the reign and allow this offense to demonstrate its full potential? Ravens have been stuck in the Aussie main mind frame since 96. Will Ravens finally catch up to the already evolved league and be successful? We saw what Lamar did in Louisville, and in 2019, Ravens got to unleash this monster eight that has been limited by bad leadership and stale philosophy. Team, keep it clean. We're going to get ready to talk about this right now, but before we do, let's hear a word from our sponsor. One of the most painful things to see on the football field every Sunday is a blindside hit, and that's because with blindside hits, you don't see them coming. They're painful, they're inconvenient, and they hit you out of nowhere. You ain't got no way to prepare for it, and the same can unfortunately be said about a car accident. But when football players get whacked, they know exactly who to call. When us regular people get into accidents, sometimes we just don't. And then just a the simple thought of the process of hiring a lawyer, it seems super stressful and it can bring a lot of anxiety. But with Morgan & Morgan, they make it easy. What Morgan & Morgan have done is modernize the injury law process. So you can actually submit a claim and have it looked at by a lawyer without even leaving the couch. If you need to sign documents, send any pictures, share any medical records or doctor bills, you can do all of that from your phone. And for those of you like myself who don't feel like being on the phone all day, you can even text text message the case manager or the attorney without ever having them to go into an office. If you ever injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is super easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they've been in an accident. So if you're ever in an accident, hopefully you won't be, but if it does happen, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in 8 clicks or less. And you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at ForThePeople.com or dial pound law, and that's pound 529 from your cell phone. So first question we starting off with a bang from my guy bb maybe the bb stands for bang bang but anyway have the ravens truly changed their philosophy by building the offense well it's really seeming like they have uh just if we think about this offseason alone how they really addressed it because it was looking like they were still going to be the ravens of old when they just signed nelson Aguilar. so i was thinking hmm okay it's a start and but maybe it may be a finish because the Ravens, especially at the position, especially at wide receivers, they go, oh, yeah, they don't make like major moves there. That's not them. That's not their style. That's not their philosophy. But then then weeks later, they end up signing Odell Beckham Jr. And they not only signed Odell Beckham Jr., but they signed him to a significant deal for some significant money, especially the fact that he had just missed the entire previous season. And they still sign him to that money. They really put a lot of trust and a lot of faith in Odell Beckham Jr. And then on top of that, they went and drafted Zay Flowers. So I was like, oh, my. Wow. They really going in. Then they mess around and sign Laquan Treadwell, too. It's so like Ravens. Whoa, all these first round pick wide receivers. Okay, now. Let's see. And you still got Rashad Bateman coming back. They kept him. I was a little worried. I was a little concerned sometimes. Like, oh, are they going to trade Rashad Bateman? Hopefully not. Because I want everybody. And they still got Mark Andrews and company in. So, yeah, the, the Ravens, on paper, the way that they've been moving, the way that they've constructed the roster, it does seem like the philosophy may be changing. And he continued to say um, for them to succeed, they'll need to operate on the old philosophy as well. Running the ball and playing good defense has been the common goal for years. So, yeah, running game shouldn't go anywhere. I think it'll be different. I think more emphasis would be placed on a passing game, um, just really bringing it out of the Ravens because it just hasn't been brought out consistently from the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but this year, I would expect them to do a lot more passing. And a lot more, just not even just more passing in volume, but more creative passing. Getting guys involved in different ways and just really opening up and using that entire field from sideline to sideline. Not, every, not having everybody bunched up in one spot, anything like that. Um, but that's the expectation. And he said, uh, will Harbaugh really give Monk in the reins and allow this offense to demonstrate its full potential? That part is all, it, I mean, really everything with the offense is to be determined. We won't know till we know. We have our expectations. I got my expectations for sure. But we won't know till we know. Won't know till we see. So first preseason game, we get a little tiny, 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 tiny glimpse. In the second preseason game, third preseason game, oh, then it's only three preseason games, and then that's it. Then we get a little break, and then it's regular season, and then we'll all eyes will be glued to see what this offense 
really does explain the hype next question came from my guy oreo cookie he said i ain't great but thanks for saying that you weren't complaining about all the questions i was sending i struggle with self-esteem issues and self-worth issues so thanks for that no man that so you, that's why I said, send them man send them if you got a question send it it's called question from subs oh I, I ain't say oh it's limited question from subs not, oh you can only send one per mother nah man send if you got them send them I, I see it all the time people will be they'll send stuff at two in the morning three in the morning sometimes if it's on your mind send it. i ain't gonna be reading it at two or three in the morning but if it's on your mind send it this series is for team keep it clean it's for all of us man because it, it 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 just is important for me that as a fan of the team that we try to give other fans of the same team or even of other teams too but give fans a voice to let their opinions be heard let their different topics that they got going on in mind be heard because sometimes you realize how how small of a world it is but how other people are like oh you know what i was thinking that same thing too oh man that's crazy i, I was just thinking about the same thing so and it's all conversation man we just all having conversation and just trying to have fun with it too but i appreciate you man you know he said but my question to you is can you help explain the hype to me about zay flowers because i don't watch college football so i really don't know uh to me it just seems like he played at a small school with nfl talent but my struggle please help me out peace now he sent this on july 26 the date today that i'm recording this is august 2nd everything that even if you didn't watch a lick of college football because y'all know i don't watch college football so I ain't watch Zay Flowers. Only once the Ravens drafted him, then I watched film on him, and I was like, okay, this is what he can do. This is what I like. Okay, boom. But even if you take that out and you just go by everything, not from minicamp, because in minicamp they said he was looking really good. I'm like, okay, it's minicamp. They ain't even got pads on, or whatever. Training camp, you have heard nothing but great things about Zay Flowers against veteran cornerbacks against younger cornerbacks against everybody in between they have just nothing but great reports about zay flowers so he's if the reports hold true and he just continues this and gets his opportunity too i would just be looking out for a very explosive player you can never have enough of those but an explosive player a player if lamar and him they get that chemistry going early oh it can be nasty, and, and the way he compliments a Odell Beckham Jr., the way he compliments a Rashad Bateman, the way he could compliment a Mark Andrews, and the way he can open that up, open the field up for all of them, make life easier for all of them, that's what you should be hyped for. Your opinion? I don't know if you want my opinion. Let's we'll see. But anyway, the next question came from my guy, George. He said, ponder this engraving. Graven. I know your feelings on not wanting to trade PQ for Chase Young from prior videos. What are your thoughts on trading PQ to the Dallas Cowboys for Zach Martin? He hasn't showed up for camp and wants a new contract. I think this will be an awesome trade to bring back offensive line dominance in a division uh, and other talk that Greeny and other talking heads are claiming to be the strongest in the AFC. Try to keep this one short and sweet. Keep up the positive reports. Appreciate that, GK. Um, wow. That's, ooh, wow. That's a, uh, ooh, that's a tricky one right there. Because Zach Martin is Zach Martin. And, like, I know Ravens have been saying, oh, John Simpson, they've been saying, um, ah, the six-round rookie, I forget his name. And I know if, even if I remember that, I'd probably mess it up for that left guard spot because it's open right now. Um, I think they'll end up going with a veteran. Will it be on the level of a Zach Martin? I don't know about that part, but... Oh, PQ for Zach Boyd. Wow. Upgrading the offensive line tremendously. Like, that's Lamar Jackson. That's J.K. Well, maybe J.K. Dobbins. But that's J.K. Dobbins. That's all the wide receivers. That's the tight end. That's the all offense. That would make their lives easier. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh. Man, he's one of the best. Wow. But for PQ. But well, that that would be one that I would I would consider I would, I would I would have no choice but to think about it because it's about the give and the take. Do you upgrade your offensive line in a tremendous way? You do lose some something on defense now. You lose somebody. You lose you, you lose somebody. Open a little playmaker on defense now. Um, but upgrade the offensive line in a major way. Mm. I guess then you would have to throw Trent Simpson in that role at that point. Um, at the PQ role. Uh, man, I just I want to keep PQ. I, I really do. Um, but that's yeah, that uh, upgrading the offensive line and having somebody that you know could come in and boom, they gonna get it done. Mm. 
that's a hard sell right there, man. Uh, well, I mean, that, that's not even a hard sell, but that's just a. Uh, mm, it, it makes it so tough to say no, cause it's, it's Zach Martin. It ain't just anybody. It ain't just no random guard or nothing like that. It's Zach Martin. Um, so yeah, if I had to, like my guy Beezy said, think like a GM, then I would definitely have to consider it. Next question came from my guy Manuel. He said, Hola, I ain't even after hearing today's press, I think a question that was undervalued by the staff, but it is important is the durability of Mandrew. Sure, amongst offenses, wide receiver centered, but it actually helps Mark not getting hit a lot of a lot on those third or even fourth downs where the drive needs to continue and certainly allows uh, him to rest. That's a really good point. It's a very, very good point because the previous offense, we love Mark Andrews. We know he could play. We know he could ball. Um, but he got used a lot. And he got tired. He got tired, exhausted. But really good point. Anyway, he says, uh, we have to remember that in the last two years, he's been hurt. And it's because G-Rose offense on the passing plays was, all right, Mark Andrews down there somewhere. And he would catch the ball but get hit hard. This also speaks that Lamar will get hit less in the pocket because he won't have to wait for all wide receiver to get open since they have been, uh, since they have been schemed open from the start. Ah, that's true. He'll be able to have more options, uh, have more guys open, hopefully, uh, so he can get that ball out quicker. Um, and just it, it'll just help the flow of everything that much more. He said, now that we have primetime wide receivers and an OC that knows how to use them, we can pass the ball even better on paper. But I can't wait to see it in action. Theory can get you so far, but execution to the max is even better with a win. That's true. Same thing we were saying earlier. Everything on paper looks good. You know, we got our own expectations, but we got to see it. Uh, and he said, P.S., I predict a 14-3 and three record if health is of no concern. 14-3. Mm. and three. I could actually see that. The last questions on this episode came from my boy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? Hope all is well with you and yours. I got a hot take. Everyone is talking about how it's a big year for Lamar, Odell, the ends, the O-line, JK, etc. But in all actuality, I believe this is the biggest year for Harbs. Ooh, in his career. Okay. Wait a minute now. All right. Initially, when you say it out loud, it sounds like a hot take. But then when you think about it, it's really not. But let's keep going. He says, uh, I say this because, you know, he brought in his boy McDonald. You know, I'm not a fan. He lost us plenty of games, LOL. But if the defense doesn't tighten up, strike one. Uh, Giro gone. We got Todd Monk and he wants to change our history since we have always been a run first team, which isn't bad. But if this goes bad, that's strike two and possibly three. Also, because due, the, uh, due to the change of the offense, those that contributed before will no longer be a factor. And those that haven't contributed before have to be a factor. I, I think it's not so black and white like that. It all just depends on the play and the position and whatnot. But anyway, he said Hollywood 2.0 uh, that can catch so far. Also, no knock to bro. He's always fan, but it's facts. LOL. I ain't like that one. I, I, I ain't appreciate that one. Anyway, he said Odell hasn't played in two years with no knees. Beckham. Uh, Rashad Bateman coming off an injury. Nelson, I can't catch a wide open pass. Aguilar, hold up now. He's been balling so far. Hey, again, we're going to see him with regular season starts, but he's been doing his thing so far. And that, Hey, I know it's just training camp, but he got to start somewhere, right? Anyway, he said all have to be huge factors. Just looking at the tape from Monk in college days. This is where it gets sketchy. You know our two best pass catchers? Yeah, Mandrews and Likely. Yeah, just by tape, their role will be decreased. Oh, yeah, and the power run game is like option five. We see how that works out for the Chargers and Bills. So I feel like this transition has to be flawless for Hobbs not to get fired. What do you think? Oh, that's powerful right there. Um, it doesn't have to be flawless. I, I really think for Harbaugh to and, and he, he made a little joke about it. I think it was this off season where he talked about he don't know how much more years he's gonna be coaching. I don't know how much longer he's gonna be coaching. Um, so, mm, but I don't think Hobbs. I, I think Hobbs is gonna go out on his own terms from the Baltimore Ravens. I, I just I don't see him being fired at all. Um, and with health, I think that this team will have plenty of success, so he won't even have to worry about being fired. But because for, for Harvard to get fired, like he would have to really be like just trying to lose and be doing a lot of losing too. And it would just have to be so astronomically bad for him to be booted. And it, it ain't gonna happen, man. Or I, I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, but anyway, he said because regardless of which side of the fence you're on about Giro. Uh, or Munkin, they are going to compare Giro's first year to Munkin's first year. Well, of course, for sure. Uh, and due to the media, if they aren't uh, significantly better than Hobbs, might be gone. Ah, uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. He said this team is way better, so it should be easy, right? And just like Bateman was for a hot second, but now he's back. I'm out. Nah, it should it be easy. It um easy. I don't know about easy, but uh, we do the the uh, the talent is better in my opinion. Um. 
and there's more variety there's more depth there's quality depth so that does help a lot another one is a question he said another hot take by halfway through the season cornerback one will be oh okay well you scared me at first i was like what he said cornerback one will be rocky scene cornerback two will be Jalen alma davis and in the slot will be marlon humphrey just me personally uh hump's best times to me have been at slot corner now i believe they will revisit that this season we're gonna see we're gonna see um he sent this uh, today i'm recording this rocky scene went down with injury Hobbs said it's nothing serious, but I mean, I'm sure by the, yeah, definitely by the time y'all see this video, we will have had the update on whatever that injury is. And hopefully it ain't nothing serious, but we'll see. Um, just me personally, Hobbs, oh yeah, I read that already. Especially because a job in a way will be getting crazy pressure off the edge. He said he's speaking it to, into existence. Uh, you're seeing a solid. Jalen Armand Davis has size and speed, but with good pressure, the first look is the check down, then the slot. That's where Hump comes into play. He will lock down the slot. Boom. We are elite. Even though, as you know, I don't like McDonald. Uh, he can redeem himself this season. What do you think? And like Mullen was for Lion, I'm out. Okay. And then they then they brought him back, though. They did bring him back. So he's back. Uh, back with the Ravens once again. Um, as far as that lineup with the cornerbacks, I mean, hey, anything is possible. And you did... Uh, you did mention Marlo in the slot. So at first, when I first saw it, and I saw cornerback one rock your scene, and cornerback two, Jalen Armand Davis, I said, like, whoa, ho, what you talking about? But then you say Marlo on the slot. Um, I don't think they'll make it a full-time thing for him. Uh, Jalen Armand Davis, did, the report's been better about him recently. We'll see how it does for the rest of the training camp. But I, I think they could mix in Mar Marlo here and there. They could move him around and whatnot. But I think they're still going to have him primarily as an outside guy. I'm sure he'll be in the slot some, but I, I just, yeah, I think they'll have him primarily outside guy. I don't think they'll put him in there no, as no permanent position for the year. 